we have conditioned ourselves to think that having straight hair is easier than having our hair tie, which is literally linked in Eurocentric standards of beauty. Because the reason that I say saying that your natural hair is difficult to take care of is propaganda is because the reason that your natural hair is difficult to take care of is because you can't wear your natural hair in its natural state, in its unstretched natural state, right? And the reason that you can't wear that is because of how society treats you. The idea that straight hair is the easiest, simplest, prettiest form is directly linked to colonialism. Hate to say it, I know you guys are like, oh, you say everything is, you say everything is anti-black. It is. Sometimes it don't make no sense. Does it really have to? There is nothing I can say. Hi, welcome to Maya's world. Hi y'all, welcome to Maya's world. My name is Maya and on my platform, I like to talk about colorism, texturism, featureism. Today we're gonna be talking about texturism and how saying that our natural hair is hard to take care of is just propaganda. So for those who are new, texturism is a discrimination of kinky hair types. And I wanna talk about a shift that I am seeing right now in society. I have made many videos about how I believe we are going into a more conservative time. And with the shift to a more conservative time, it's going to be very hard on natural hair, right? Like we are already seeing, you know, a shift in people trying to bring back perms and certain languages of how we speak about our hair is, is I'm finding a lot of it to be very problematic. Child, we was just talking about the natural hair warriors. Don't let one of them see you with straight hair. They gonna think you anti-black, anti-fro, you hate your blackness. Don't nobody got five hours every weekend to wash, detangle, untangle. Need that quick silk press, wake up two seconds, done for the day. Convenient. So with there being a more conservative shift, I am seeing change in how we discuss our hair and also products being pushed to us on a heavier and like bigger scale. This time period reminds me of the beginning of when the natural hair movement started to get gentrified and there started to become a lot of propaganda around what you need to be able to do to take care of your natural hair. And essentially people, because right now there's like so much financial hardship, we are going to be seeing people doing more cash grabbing opportunities to sell you lies. And so these are just things that I'm observing and today I want to talk about how we are discussing our hair and what I'm seeing um, companies do in response. So I just want to start off by saying that I really believe that saying that our natural hair is difficult to take care of is a form of propaganda. I am someone who does not believe in toxic positivity, so please listen to what I'm trying to say. In this setting, I really think language matters, right? So I feel like our natural hair is not hard to take care of. Styling our natural hair is the, the difficult part. It is not the natural hair in itself. And I think this is a really important differentiation. So I've seen a lot of content about how difficult and terrible and hard it is to have 4C hair. And I say 4C hair because it's always the kinkiest hair type that I am seeing people talk about how difficult our hair is. My personal belief is your 4C hair is going to be difficult if you are trying to style it to look anything other than 4C. I am not someone who believes in toxic positivity, right? So I'm not telling you to lie to yourself and be like, oh, this is amazing when you really are not liking your hair. It is important to notice that what you're not liking is how it looks in certain styles. It's not how the hair is by itself because our hair has literally adapted to protect us. The reason that you have 4C kinky hair is literally to protect itself because of heat. Like with me having freeform locks, my hair literally shields me from the sun. I could, you could put me out in the sun for 10, 12 hours. I literally am not feeling it the same way that somebody who has no hair is because my hair is protecting me from the sun. Another thing about my hair is my hair also protects me from the rain. Like if you, you could put me out in the rain and I will not get drenched the same way as somebody who does not have this hair texture is. So our hair actually literally has benefits as to how we've been able to survive till today. That is why we have our hair is kinky and it coils up. And why I mentioned that we're going through a conservative time is because people have sold us so many lies with our natural hair since the beginning. And we will start when we talk about the people on the perm boxes. I've made videos about how the girls who were getting their hair permed in the perm boxes were not actually even perming their hair. Something that I noticed, and I think a lot of other people were noticing as well, was that a lot of these girlies who were on the cover of the perm boxes wasn't even getting perms. So it's funny because 
the four, three C hair people were also were the people on the perm box, but three C hair people were also the people on the as the face of the natural hair movement. It's wild that they were naturally someone who benefits from texturism. They were having their hair and showing you that if you just buy this product, you will have hair like them. This is incredibly deceitful. And I'm not blaming the young girls who were on the cover, but I'm looking at the companies and the people who allowed that, right? So what is it? And I'm surprised that there's not, we're not even able to do some kind of class lawsuit or something because it's literally false advertisement. But I still see that same method being used in the natural hair movement. The reason that the natural hair movement went far left or just went wrong, really went far. I don't even know which direction it went. It just went off the rails. The reason that the natural hair movement just became discombobulated was because people started lying and because people started selling you an idea that doing your hair and making it look nice will take hours. Lies. Just lying. I went from two inches of hair at the reunion of Real Housewives of Atlanta at the top of last year to bob length hair in a matter of six months from this shampoo. It's not possible! It is totally insane! Like, girl, what did you, why did you lie? Like, you literally could have just told the truth. Right? So, so many natural hair girls would be like, yeah, this is a wash day. And they're doing a six hour, eight hour routine. And then they're like, you got to get these products. And they're showing you 30 products. Use an array of products. I do that, then we all must condition our hair, right? Part of my hair. Don't forget the middle of your hair. And they have a one, two, three, four step process. Tea tree shampoo. This is everything. Next one, which is the deep moisturizing shampoo. Now you're clean. But you're not done. You're clicking on the products, you're looking it up. It's like $30 or $40 per product. Now you just spent $600 on a product and your hair isn't changing because you're trying to get your hair to style and look like someone who doesn't have your hair type. And this kind of level of deceitfulness is what causes our relationship to our hair to be disconnected. And this is why from the beginning of my channel, you can see I'm never going to promote any kind of products on my hair because for me it's going to be dishonest i keep everything simple for myself um but many people don't and i can tell because it's like every every kind of black hair has like certain levels of lies every black hairstyle like has some kind of propaganda to go with it and i think that's wild when i look at when i click and see 4c hair and i scroll i am not seeing 4c hair Right. And like what I'm also trying to say is I know that the hair typing system was created by somebody who's not black and who was just essentially very texturist. But what I'm trying to say about the hair type is like I am looking for someone who can mirror me. So I'm looking for somebody who has the kinkiest type of hair. And I don't see that when I type in 4C. And I'll show you how it literally is affecting every group because I have freeform locks. When I've typed in freeform locks and I see who's looking there, a lot of the hairstyles they're showing you are not even freeform locks. So when you're starting and you're looking like, oh, why isn't my hair looking like this? It's not even freeform locks. And if you look at styles for 4C hair, it's not going to show you 4C hair. So every single black hair has propaganda to it. And if you kind of get to the root of it, it's going to be either from colorism, textures, and featureism wrapped in with capitalism and just trying to sell you whatever we can. It's caused us to have a disconnect. And I think the issue is that we're associating, we see that deception within our hair versus seeing that the, the two things aren't related. You don't need all these products to have your natural hair. Saying that our hair, like our natural hair is hard to take care of, and then simultaneously saying that's why I wear lace fronts or that's why I have weaves or that's where I wear wigs, I really find it to be disingenuous because, um, so I've had weaves before, I've never had a lace front before, but those styles also take time. And those styles also have its own um, negative things that come while you wear it, but ultimately, we have conditioned ourselves to think that having straight hair is easier than having our hair type, which is literally linked in Eurocentric standards of beauty, right? Like, the, I don't know how else to explain it. The idea that straight hair is the easiest, simplest, prettiest form is directly linked to colonialism. I hate to say it. I know you guys are like, oh, you say everything is, you say everything is anti-black. It is. Yeah, babe, it is. I'm so sorry. I am not. Don't shoot the messenger. You know what I'm saying? And the reason that I also know that the conversation is disingenuous is because we 
have shifted how we used to wear wigs and weaves, right? Back in the day, you would just put on a wig. It could look like a hat. Like it could sit four inches above your head. And it's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Just rock it. I love Nollywood for that. Like Nollywood, they'll just put on a wig. It might not look real, but we're going to wear the wig. Because guess what? It's a wig. It's not supposed to look like your real hair. But now with the advancement in technology, the goal is to make the hair look real. And that's when I started to feel like people were being disingenuous. Because it's not like you're just trying to get something to cover your hair so you can get above, get about your day, right? You're looking for something to make it seem as if it's growing from the scalp. And then there's so many people who are hypercritical of how you wear your lace front, right? Hypercritical of being like, oh, I can see your lace. I can see your lace. Baby, it is not real. And I don't know what's more concerning, the fact that people are expecting it to be real or the fact that people are saying that our natural hair isn't good. But it's like, I don't know if people can realize, but every single option that you do, like every single decision that you choose to make, you will be criticized for it. So I saw this video of like an old white man telling a black woman that like, oh, I can see your lace front lifting. Why are we expected to do that? Like, uh, uh, uh. And the truth, like the true person, if you're wanting to get mad, like the real people to get mad at is the system in place. Because the reason that I say saying that your natural hair is difficult to take care of is propaganda is because the reason that your natural hair is difficult to take care of is because you can't wear your natural hair in its natural state, in its unstretched natural state, right? And the reason that you can't wear that is because of how society treats you. And I want people to be honest about that because everyone's like, oh no, I just want to do these styles with my natural hair. I just want to do these styles. A lot of us times we're doing these styles because these styles will, will allow us to be treated better than when our natural 4C hair is in its shrunken state. If you're saying it's taking you five, six hours to tangle your hair and you're doing that every single day, I'm not even mad at you for how you're doing your hair, but I think that there's a sign that something is wrong because I really don't believe that 4C kinky hair needs that much manipulation to change it. There is There are ways to detangle your hair quickly when you do have 4C hair, if you don't want your hair to look like that. And people are saying to me like, oh, you don't know what, you don't know what it's like to have kinky hair. Like, babe... <laughs> My hair literally is 4C clump forming hair grown out. Newsflash, I think people think that I had, I went to a loctician to get my hair like this. I've never gone to a loctician. This is literally what 4C hair looks like grown out. And um, yes, okay, this is what 4C hair looks like grown out without detangling it, without manipulation. And I'm not saying that everyone needs to have freeform locks, but I just don't feel like we're being honest because I do know what it's like to have four short 4C hair. And I do also know that people associate it with being undone, unkept, dirty. And even this one, there was this girl online and she had her 4C hair out and, and she went on a date with her shrunk, shrunken 4C hair. And people were like, oh, why didn't you even do your edges? Why is there such an expectation that we do more? when no other race is expected to do as much to their hair to show up. And we all know about how there have been recent like um, news articles and even lawsuits against perm companies because they're finding a tie between cancer and using perms, which is so wild. And even with all those studies coming out, people are still using perms. And I'm not like, you know, to me, a perm is a chemical solution to texturism, the same way that bleaching is a chemical solution to colorism society isn't nice to people who have dark skin and who have kinky hair. I, I really know that, but I want us to be honest with why we're doing what we're doing. I want us to be honest and to say, I need it for assimilation instead of saying, oh, my hair is just so difficult to take care of, or, oh, my skin is just so dark. I can't use my natural skin tone. Just say what it is because I feel like it's a cognitive dissonance. You're lying to yourself. And when you lie to yourself, you have more severe damages in the future than if you're just honest and being like i need to assimilate i am seeing like perms also change forms and like new products being pushed something that i saw being pushed is like this brand called beautiful textures and they're calling it a texture manageability also known as naturally straight reversible straightening personally my opinion it's the same thing as a perm in my opinion, I feel like you're changing the name to to market the same thing. If y'all could have lied to us for 50 years saying perms have no side effects 
And then 50 years later, I'm finding out it does. What makes you think I'm going to trust something that's called a texture manageability? Y'all think that adding these little sophisticated words to it is going to make it sound better or be better? For me, I don't believe it. And I think that I'm seeing a rise in people being like, oh, this is like a safer option. And we're going to see more like offshoots of people saying that these things are safer options. But they're all pretty much doing the same things. And it's all talking to the same root. And like for me, I'm not someone who, I'm not trying to give you the solution. But I do believe that having more people who have 4C hair wearing their hair in its shrunken natural state is going to be able to show people that you can do your hair and it doesn't have to take you six hours. Like your hair is fine as it is. And it's not your hair that's difficult. It's styling your hair to look like something it's not that's difficult. And also just like kind of acknowledging when you see people who are doing cash grabs and when you see people who are lying about their hair texture and when you realize that that hair texture that they are showing isn't looking like your hair texture or your hair texture doesn't do what their hair texture does. Just being honest. I think that just being honest with yourself and being honest with the state of the world and being honest that we're all under this system of anti-blackness and it does not like kinky textured hair. It does not like it. So how do we show up and how do we survive? But I do believe it is a lie to say that having a lace front is easier and it, it isn't an option for everybody to do. And it's also expensive. It's also like having a lace front is literally not accessible. Like it can cost a lot of money. Not always, but it can do. If you want human hair, it can do. Um, and also when you have your hair, like my rule of thumb is I feel like natural hair and I'm talking about locks. Like if your hair is not locked, if your hair is short, natural hair needs to be moisturized as often as it can. If you can keep, if you can spray water in your hair as often as it can, the better it will be. In my opinion, I feel like if you're styling your hair in a way where you can't have water touch your hair because it's going to mess up your style, it might not be working within the natural hair texture that you do have because water should be always able to be on your hair. It, like We're not people who are not supposed to have water near our hair. We're, like We literally need water. This is just my opinion. I'm not a hairstylist. That's just something that I've noticed with having 4C hair. Anyway, if you made it to the end of the video, let me know what you like on my outfit. I I have tried to do like a little two-tone lip because no one is more beautiful to me than black people who have two-tone lips. You know what I'm talking about? Like the dark upper lip and then the lighter like bottom lip or whatever combination they have. Supreme. I try and do my makeup to have a little, I try to mimic that a little bit. Try to, you know, conceal myself like I'm a two-tone lip girly. But I tried. My makeup is simple. The outfit is simple, but let me know what you think and let me know if you've noticed people saying more and more that our natural hair is hard to take care of because I just think it's a lie. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.